right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, well, afternoon, technically. It is, it is very, very slightly afternoon. Uh, nonetheless, uh, today we're going to be discussing tree traversals. And this is going to be a pretty lightweight lecture. It won't uh, be particularly con. Uh, I so I don't I don't I can't really do scheduling questions right now. Um, certainly I could try to help in office hours, but um, here is what I will say, and I'll just say this now, even though technically I, I don't know if I'm quote unquote supposed to. Um, is that, and I'll go ahead and pull up the relevant PDF. Um, I can at least share this real quick. And it's that uh, with 2150, it is, it should be open to all CS majors, as well as EE major, CPE, and cognitive science. Uh, if you're a minor, it won't be open until April 30th. Uh, and if you're neither... It won't be open until May 10th. So if you need to declare your status as a major or a minor, you need to reach out uh, to your current advisor to do so. Um, that's all I can really say. Uh, yeah, correct. You you need to be declared. Um, so that's the, and 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 understand that the reason for this is this class always has more demand than it can fill. And so we want to make sure that we get in declared people first. Um, and this is this is going to be the standard for pretty much any CS class that you take. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not really like there's no class that I'm going to plug for myself for next term, as no one who's taking this class can take 3240 next term, because uh, you won't be able to take 2150. Uh, and I'll go ahead and link this in chat just so you can read it. Um, but again, the simp I, I want to explain why this happens because I have time today. This lecture I can probably finish in 10 minutes, not a joke. Um, the, the reason this is like this, and you may think, oh, why don't the computer science department hire more people? One, there's now a hiring freeze, but two, we actually have been trying. Um, and, and in fact, we've been succeeding. I mean, keep in mind, I've only been here a year, so I'm a successful hire for the department. It's that in the course of about 15 years, really dating back to kind of the post the dot com like crash after the dot com crash or dot com burst or whatever pop, whatever you want to call it. Um, computer science was actually rather, uh, rather small. At that point, this is the early 2000s, and I started computer science in 2006, and that was right when it started to rebound, when people started to go back into computer science. From that point to now, computer science has more than tripled nationally. At many universities, it's more than quadrupled. Um, 15 years is not a lot of time to hire a lot of new faculty. Faculty tend to be around, hopefully, for decades. Uh, you don't try to hire tons and tons of new people at one time. And so this is why the classes fill up. It's simply because there are more people than there are people wanting to do the job. And to be clear, uh, I lived with a total of five people um, at different points during grad school. Uh, so of the six of us, two of us are in academia the rest are in, one is in a research lab and the other three are in industry. And of the people in computer science, it was even left. I think maybe 25% of my PhD graduating class went into academia. The rest went into industry or labs. And it's because they pay better. I mean, I, 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 this, you know, I do this job because I love it. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I do okay, but yeah, I'd make more money in industry. But that's a factor. And so with all of that, this is why every university is having this problem in computer science. I mean, every single university is having this problem. Um, what does CS research look like? Oh, my goodness. That is, CS research is extraordinarily broad. Um, there's AI, there's human-computer interaction, 
There's data mining, there's machine learning, there's software engineering, there's cybersecurity, there's computer vision, there's theory, there's, uh, I mean, you know, that's not even getting into applications. That's all just in computer science. From there, the applications are uncountable. I mean, I've, I've seen, you know, I've seen uh, biology professors uh, co-authoring papers with computer scientists, for example. Uh, I've seen a lot of doctors co-authoring papers with computer scientists. Uh, so CS research is, is almost anything you want to make it. I mean, I mean, more so than any other field. So that's, it, it's, it's actually a hard question to answer because it's just so broad. Uh, I specifically did software engineering research for my PhD, but yeah, I've heard rumors that next semester. So, okay. I want to nip any rumors in the bud by just being honest. Uh, one, nothing has been announced and there's no internal discussion at all. My understanding is a decision is made. And I can't remember. It's one of the J months, well, either June or July. I can't remember which, but I think it's July. They will make a decision, but as yet they're not making any decision. Um, and, and what I would suspect is this is going to depend a lot on what happens over the summer regarding COVID-19. I, I don't want to be political, uh, but oh well, uh, I, I'm, I'm very worried about what some governors are doing, saying that they're going to just reopen their states uh, within very short order. I think that's going to make the problem worse, not better. And I think it's going to make ultimately the pro the problem last longer. Um, but everything is just unpredictable. So I don't want to speculate. Yeah. And again, don't take anything I'm saying as gospel. I just know nothing has been announced. I know summer classes are online. That's what I know. Uh, oh, and by the way, summer classes are, uh, all full all full with the full wait list and everything. So we're trying to add more, but is it worth to pursue a CS minor? If you want to, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't think there's ever, I don't, th I've never seen a situation where someone's like, Oh, and you minored in this. No, we don't want you like the minor never hurts. You know, it would be like me saying, do you want a dollar? How many people here want a dollar? How many people want a dollar? Okay, before I asked, before I asked, how many people expected a dollar? Before I asked if anyone wanted a dollar, how many people expected a dollar? No one. So it, it's one of those, like, if you, if I offered you a dollar out of the blue, you would take it the same as if you offer a minor to someone out of the blue. It helps. But it's not like they're necessarily looking for it. It just helps. That's the point. Uh, I mean, so whether or not you want to do it, it depends on if you want to do the work. It depends on if you want to do 2150 and the necessary electives. And, you know, if you sincerely don't think a CS minor would help you in your field, then, I mean, there's not necessarily a reason but if you think it would help and, and you're interested by the material, I, I wouldn't say no. I know I'm kind of just wasting time, but I swear this lecture is is very short. All right. So with that, let's just go to get to the short lecture. So today, uh, sorry, that slide is actually out of date. Uh, just a quick reminder here. Uh, the homework homework was posted Monday. Webcat went up last afternoon. Well, yesterday afternoon. So like it was like around 3.30 afternoon yesterday. Just to be clear, this homework, 100% auto-graded. Now, for those saying, does that mean we don't need to comment our code? Um, you won't be graded on commenting. However, as I've said before... Mo you are going to read your code more times than you write it. You are going to write your code once. You're going to read it to debug it 
many, 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 many times. And if you make your code unreadable and you don't have no comments, it's going to hurt you. And it's going to make it harder for a TA if you need a TA to help you. So you really should try to comment your code meaningfully. Um, I, I, you should really just generally get into the habit of doing that regardless. You do need J unit. So to be clear, um, J unit needed. If you don't have any J unit tests, um, then when you submit webcat simply won't grade it. So there's a certain threshold of your code. That is a certain percentage of lines of code that your tests need to execute. And if you don't reach that threshold, um, J or webcat won't score it. This is the last homework. Yes. Yes. This is certainly the last homework and it is due next Tuesday, uh, at 1130. Here is what I will say. This assignment's actually, once you can get over the hump, and this is why we taught link lists to help you understand, um, to help you understand link data structures, because a binary search tree is just, uh, effectively implemented like a linked list. Um, this assignment's pretty easy. I, I, I think I finished it in 12 minutes. And I'm not, like, exaggerating. I'm not trying to brag. I also know the material, so, of course, I will do it faster. I'm not saying aim for 12 minutes. I'm just saying there's not a whole lot to this assignment. I will say that the reason there's not a whole lot is because we removed the delete method. And the delete method took me about 45 minutes to write and debug. And that was with the 12 minutes uh, of the, the previous part. So the delete method is like most of the assignment and we removed it. So it it's not a, an overly difficult assignment. Do we get to teach the class? We get a sub 12 minute. Hell, hell you want to teach the class today? <clears throat> Um, yeah, the delete method is, yeah, I'll just leave that there. Anyway, um, from there, just to outline Friday, we will be discussing heaps. Uh, next Monday will be review as a reminder. Um, I will go through topics one at a time. Ask questions about the topic when I'm on the topic. So a heap is actually implemented like a binary tree. Uh, let me real quick. Here, I'll just put this right here. That seems like a good place. Here, there we go. That seems like a good place for it. Uh, a heap is implemented like a binary tree. Uh, and it, 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 it's used in a similar fashion. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and pop into the slides today. <clears throat> exactly, bird box. I'm worried about I'm worried about the next step of coronavirus when the things that yeah, anyway. Well, it actually wasn't that great a horror movie, I'm not going to lie. Anyway. So, one question that we've we have to deal with is how do we visit every node of a tree? That's a a reasonable question to ask. I, I will say that I liked Bird Box never showing the monster itself. If they had showed the monster, it would have cheapened it. Um, I'm glad that now, because I'm glad that they actually made that decision to never show the things. That, anyway. Let's say I have an array. That's right, I'm teaching class. I'm not just ranting. My bad. Again, I think Quiet Place would have been better if they never actually showed the monster. So, let's say I have some array of elements. I can loop through this array. And the idea of looping through the array is I visit every cell of the array once. Exactly one time, no more than once. I loop through, I visit every element. We can also do this with a linked list pretty trivially, right? With a linked list, we can go, okay, I'm starting at the front, at the head, and I visit every node. And we do that with a traveling node. 
But now the question is, if we have a tree, and let's say in this case a binary tree, I notice I'm saying a binary tree, not a binary search tree. Uh, remember the distinction between a binary tree and a binary search tree. A binary search tree is a tree that adheres to the bi binary search principle. That is left is less than, right is greater than. My question is, how would I visit every node of this tree? What order would I visit these nodes in? I'm going to label them. A, B, C, D, E, and F. How, how could I visit these? Would I visit them just, let's go one level at a time, A, and then B, C, and then D, E, F? I could do it that way. I could also, and this, this would be, by the way, called a breadth first search. I could also, however, visit them in some different ways. And we're going to look at some today. For example, maybe I visit the nodes like I do here. I go down the left and I keep kind of just looping around the outside like this. Or maybe I visit the nodes this way. There's a number of ways to do it. And it turns out to actually be fairly straightforward. So the first is we're going to start with a tree traversal. And understand that a tree traversal is exactly like what we're doing with the array and the linked list there. We are visiting every node exactly once. We're not missing any nodes. We're not visiting any node twice. Now, by visit, I want to be clear. I mean perform some action on each node. And there... It turns out that we can do this in a number of different orders. Pre-order, in order, and post-order. And once you get one, the others are just very trivial. And these orders are applied recursively. So they're quite easy to do. In each technique, the idea of the tree traversal is we are going to visit the left before the right. This is true in any binary tree, not just a binary search tree. So this is true for binary search trees and just binary trees in general. We are going to visit the left before the right, and then we are also going to visit the root node of that subtree. So th by visiting a node, again, what we mean is doing some processing at that node. Uh, for It's often just printing, but it may be something like, let's get the sum of, of every node in the tree. You could do that as well. And it turns out that they're, they're rather easy to explain. And you could write this down, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't do you any, any harm to write it down. We are always going to do, and I'm going to go up to the whiteboard here real quick. My mouse is acting up. There we go. We are always going to do the left subtree. Handwriting is, is, a, is hard. And then the right subtree. The difference is, if we're doing a pre-order traversal, we do the root first. If we're doing an in-order traversal, we do the root in between left and right, in being uh, it's inside of left and right. That's kind of the, the hint. And then post is root. So pre, the root comes before everything else. Post, the root comes after everything else. In, the root comes between everything. Fairly straightforward. What does this actually look like? Well, let's base it on this tree. Let's do a pre-order traversal. And what I'm going to say is at every node, I'm going to print it. So up here in this box, I'm going to write what prints when I do my pre-order traversal here. So I'm at node A, so I'm going to use that node, and I'm going to print it A. I'm then going to go down the left child, so I'm going to recurse down to the left. I'm using the X's to keep track of my call stack. I'm at B, I visit it, so I print it. 
I go down the left subtree. I'm at D, so I print it D. There is no left subtree. There is no right subtree, so I return back to B. Then I go down the right subtree. I hit E. I print that node. There is no left. There is no right, so I recurse. I've now gone down both the left and right of B, so I recurse. I'm back up to A, and now I need to recurse down the right side. So I visit this node C. There is no left subtree. I go down the right subtree. I visit node X. Or X no, node X. Wow, I'm tired. Node F. And I return, or I print F, I should say. I return because there are no child trees. I return, and then I return, and I'm done. Would you need the tree to be doubly linked for this? No, because you can do this with recursion. We'll show a uh, pseudocode for it in just a second. This is pre-order. Now let's take a look at what would happen if I did, in this case, post-order. Uh, actually, let's do in order for now. In order. So with in order, I start at the root. I go down the left because I don't I don't visit this node yet. Even though I'm here, I don't actually do anything with it yet. I recurse down the left. I'm at B. I don't visit it yet. I recurse down the left. Then D has no left to recurse down. So then I visit D. I then go down the right, but there is no right. So I return. I've finished with this node, so I return. I'm down uh I'm now back at B. I visit B. I then go down the right side. The right side has no left, so then I visit E. Has no right, so I return back up to B. I have now done the left root and right for B, so I return. I now visit A. So notice A, I don't actually get to until I'm done with the entire left tree. I then go down the right subtree. C has no left subtree. So I just visit C. I go down the right. F has no left subtree. I visit F. There is no right. So I return. I return. And then I return. And notice I end up with a different order. But the key is... Every letter appears exactly one time. And if I do post order, I will end up with a different order. But it will still have every node visited exactly once. And you can see another example of this uh, on the slides here, which if they're not uploaded, uh, they will be shortly. My PowerPoint is crashing. Yay! There we go. Okay. Now, an interesting um, an interesting kind of note here. So if, if we do a pre-order traversal, we would do A, then B, then C. This actually forms what is called a depth-first search. And a depth-first search, so if you're searching for a value, there's two kinds of searches. There's depth-first search and breadth-first search. Depth-first search involves going as deep as you can and then backtracking and trying different routes. Breadth first search would involve trying to go wider rather than deeper. Um, and we'll get into, uh, as much as we need to, we'll get into that. But it, you'll, you'll cover more about breadth first search and depth first search, certainly in, in 2150. Uh, an, a useful example of a pre-order traversal is something called uh, prefix notation. We actually won't visit this later because that's been cut from the class, so we can delete that. But prefix notation is used if you do, um, if you ever want to have fun, learn a language called Common Lisp. And in Common Lisp, there are no operators; there are only functions. And so, plus is a function with two arguments. So if you do plus five three. This is actually equal to 8 because this operand is a function and 5 and 3 are arguments. And then you could do things like times uh, minus 6, 4. And this would be 
5 plus 3 is 8. 6 minus 4 is 2. 8 times 2 is 16. We're, you're not expected to learn Lisp for this class, but I, I actually quite like the language. I think, not that I use it regularly, but learning Lisp will help you write uh, more functionally independent code, which is, is a good skill to develop. An in-order traversal actually has a value to it, and that is if your tree is a binary search tree, your in-order traversal will always produce a sorted tree. If that is the if your tree is a binary search tree, an in-order traversal will always return every element in sorted order. Let's do an example of this. Let's just make up a binary search tree on the fly. Let's say I have uh, 10, 5, 6, I can't really put a number there, uh, 8, 3, 4, 2, and 12. And let's do 11. So let's say this is my binary search tree. And I'm just checking. Yeah, it does. It is It is a valid binary search tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the in-order traversal. So that means left, root, right. I'm going to start at this node. And I'm going to go left. Actually, let me use blue for this. And I'm going to go left. And then I'm going to go left, and then I'm going to go left, and there is no left, so I visit 2, and I'm just going to write it here, 2. I There is no right, I return. I now am done with left, so I visit 3. I iterate, or I recurse down the right. There is no left, I visit 4, there is no right. Recurse. I'm done with this node, recurse. I now visit 5. I go down the right. There is no left, so I visit 6. I go down the right. There is no left, so I visit 8. There is no right, so I return. Return. And then return up to 10. But then I go down the right. There is a left, so I visit that first. 11. There is no left or right, so I return. I'm back up at 12, I visit 12, there is no right, so I return, and I return. And look at that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. They're in sorted order. Any valid binary search tree doing an in-order traversal will print the, or at least will visit the elements. You may not necessarily be printing, but it will visit the elements in sorted order, which is a rather useful thing. And this is useful for um, this is useful for visiting all the elements. In fact, you remember when we talked about how a tree set, if you print a tree set, if you make a tree set of values uh, and print it, that tree set when you print is in sorted order. And so, the tree set is actually a binary search tree. Now it is, uh, technically it's called a balanced binary search tree. If I remember, I think it's a red-black tree, which is a particular methodology for balancing uh, a binary search tree, which we are just not going to get into in this class. But if you're curious, uh, you can look that up on your own. You obviously are not required, in fact, should not try to uh, make a balanced binary tree for the homework if you do actually try to balance it it will throw off our tests so don't try to balance it uh this is useful for infix notation and once again we won't revisit this later but you can do something like an expression tree and that would be you'd calculate a and b first there and then c minus d you'd multiply them you then do e plus f and divide you get the idea and then finally, post-order traversal, um, not really as useful. It's post-fix expre post expression. Once again, we won't revisit it. 
All right, so given a tree, let's start and let's everyone try to practice this. I want to write and and don't just type the answer in chat. I'll, I'll, I'll prompt for the answer later and I want everyone to just spam the correct answer all at one time. All right, write an in-order traversal for this tree of Star Wars characters. Don't write it in chat yet. Type it, but don't hit enter. I will, I will say hit enter at a certain time, and I want to see, like, there's 107 people watching. I want 107 uh, lines entered right then and there when I say hit enter. So I'll give you, like, a minute to do that. Hang on, let, let, oh, oh, one sec. Yes, I'm I'm this childish. All right, ready? Hit enter in three, two, one. Hit enter, go. Awesome. This is exactly what I was hoping to see. Chewbacca, Han, Leia, Lando, Luke, Vader, Obi, Yoda. In fact, they are in alphabetical order. And so there we go. Thank you. That is that is exactly what I was hoping for. All right. So you're getting the idea of this. So now how are these coded? It turns out, and by the way, the, the correct answer is Chewbacca, Landa, Leia, Han. It's alphabetical order, it turns out. So how does this actually work at a code level? Well, it turns out it's fairly simple, and I'm going to do pseudocode. Um, remember that there's a difference between the tree... Oops, this is being cut off. Let's do it this way. There's a difference between the tree class and the node class. Remember that the tree has a node root whereas the node class has a left a right and a value so how how does this actually work well with the tree class the first thing we need to take into account is if the root equals null can i do any kind of traversal if the root of my tree is null is there any kind of traversal that i can do No, right? And so I'm just going to return. There's there's nothing I can really do. Let's say that I wanted to, to get a string from this. I would just return either null or an empty string, depending on what was inside. But I, there's nothing to loop over if the root is null. But remember that the root is a separate class. And if it is, then what I can do is call a method root.inOrder. And this class will have a method in order and it will simply be in this case i'm doing an in order traversal remember we visit left then root then right so first i'm going to call in order on the left node then i'm going to do something with root, whatever that is. I don't know necessarily what that something is. Uh, maybe it's system.out.println, maybe it's added to a string, whatever. And then write.inOrder. And the only difference, really, the only difference between in order and pre order, this is pre order. That's pre-order. And this is post-order. That's all there is to it. What about on the left and right is null? Good point. 
I do need to put in safety checks. So something like if left is not equal to null. And then, and let me, I really shouldn't be programming a notepad, whatever. If right is not equal to null. I'm intentionally doing pseudocode because it might be on the homework. Um, something like that. So you do need to put null checks in place to avoid a null pointer exception. But all that changes is basically whatever you're doing with the root, that either goes before, in the middle, or after for pre, in, and post order, uh, respectively. Any questions? And again, this has a, a wide variety of applications. For example, we could do it for processing tree elements that is iterating through. We can do a traversal to determine what does the in order function actually do? Depends on what you want it to do. It may be that I just want to print all the elements in order. It may be that I want to get a sum of the elements or find the largest value. The point is I'm trying to visit every node of a binary tree. And whatever I want to do with it, that's what I can do inside of in order. So if I wanted to print, maybe I would just do something like SOP um, value. I, I, I could do that. Um, SOP for system.out.println. Or I could add it to a string or, or any number of things. I don't want to give a specific example because, again, this is something you're doing on the homework. Uh, but the point is you use the traversal to visit every node once. So, so sorry, I, I was, I was, I had actually been messing with this. So I was saying this would be post order as opposed to that would be in order as opposed to that would be pre order. So I was just showing all that changes is where this goes. So you are correct in order, it would go here. It would go here. So now, again, you can use this to determine, say, the tree size. You can do an in-order traversal to get a number of nodes. You can do an in-order traversal for sorting. Uh, remember that, or sorry, not for sorting, excuse me, for searching. Remember that in-order, pre-order, and post-order work on any binary tree. It does not have to be specifically a binary search tree. So from there, we can also look at two different kinds of sort, breadth first and depth first. And this is actually a pretty good illustration of these two searches. Now, searches are not the same as traversals. With searches, the idea is we're looking for something and we stop looking when we find it. But the idea of breadth first is I iterate through my tree one layer at a time whereas with depth first i dig all the way down and i backtrack and i dig down and i backtrack and i dig down and i backtrack and i dig down and i backtrack it's the idea and the way this works is through uh and you and this again is pseudocode you can do a depth first search by storing nodes in a stack and so the idea is i'm going to these would be inefficient, correct? Um, I mean, the, the inherent problem is, again, I, in this case, I'm assuming we're talking about a binary tree, not a binary search tree. And the inherent problem you run into is there's no quote-unquote efficient way to search uh, a, an unsorted structure. You actually do need to use depth-first search and breadth-first search if there's no order to the structure. If it's a binary search tree, obviously you wouldn't do a breadth first or depth first. You would just do the find function. But in this case, I'm just talking. And by the way, breadth first and depth first ap apply to any graphs, not just trees. But for a tree, for a binary tree, the way we would do um, a, a, a depth first search is first we would push the root onto, the, onto a stack. And remember with a stack, we have push and we have pop. From there, 
I'm going to, while the stack is not empty, I'm going to pop off the stack that is removed from the stack, the top node. I'm then going to visit that node. So whatever I need to do, again, if this is print or whatever I want, the point is process is something that happens with that node. But then for each child of N, and it actually, starting with the last one doesn't really matter. You can do it in any order. But the point is you want to be consistent. For each, for each child, you're going to push that child onto the stack. And so, for example, here, we start with F. We push B and G onto the stack. Well, we push first. Sorry, let me start over. We push F onto the stack. So my stack looks like this. And I'm going to put F at the bottom. We then pop F off the stack and push its children. B and then G. Actually, let me do let me do the last one first. So it could be B and G. So I push G first and then I push B. Then I'm going to pop B off the stack and I push its children D and A. Then I pop A off the stack. And um, A has no children, so I don't push anything on. Then I pop D off the stack and I push its children on, E and C. I pop C off the stack. There are no children, nothing to push on. I pop E off the stack. There are no children. From there, I go now to G. I pop G off the stack and I push its children, specifically I. I pop I off the stack. I push its child H. I pop H off the stack. H has no children. My stack is empty. And now the depth first search is done. And that's all just from this pseudocode. So it's fairly straightforward. Depth first search are often used for simulating games. Um, so it's, it's popular as a way to form a tree of chess moves. You can do uh, in chess often there's heuristics. So you don't search every possibility. You search every possibility up to a certain depth. And then you pick the most promising n number of branches and then you search those of course modern techniques actually don't do this modern techniques use uh model list learning uh which is quite exciting and and something fun to look into if you want to by comparison a breadth first search is going to involve not a stack but a queue and so to simulate the queue, I'm actually going to write it left to right with left being the front of the queue and right being the back of the queue. Let me have one second to work this out. There we go. So let's go back and let's do the same graph, but now as a queue. So first I'm going to push the, or I'm going to in queue the root. I then dequeue the root and add its children in order. So I'm going to add B then G. I DQB and I NQ its children, A and D. Now I DQG and NQ its children, which there's only one, I. I DQA, it has no children. I DQD, it has two children, C and E. I DQI, it has one child, H. I DQC, it has no children. I DQE, it has no children. I DQH. Now, in practice, a breadth first search ends up using significantly more memory in practice. That is to say, significantly more memory than a depth first search. But it has a useful property, and that property is. A depth, a breadth first search will can be used to provide the shortest path, the shortest path from uh, one node to another in a, in a graph. This is not a tree, but it's useful. So today's in class activity. Let me just make sure it's up first. Um, oops, you're uh, once again seeing how I use YouTube uh, for class. Give me one sec. Today's in-class activity is tree traversal based. Let me just make sure that it is up. And if it's not, I'll, I'll put it up. But I'm, 
would imagine it's up because I'm usually one of the later sections each day. Yes, Stuart, I hear you meowing. Sorry, my cat is just... I haven't given a, him attention in all of 46 minutes, so he's he's very, very upset at me. Yeah, Colab's being a little slow. How unique. Yeah, so the in-class activity today for binary tree traversal is up. So that is 422 binary tree traversal. So work on that with each other. And with that, uh, that's all I have today. Since I have four minutes left, I can answer any questions. Okay, so I want you to understand that door, hang on, that door over there is my garage door. Stuart is obsessed about getting into my garage, and I have no idea why. So now he's, now he's trying to butter me up for attention, but he really wants to get into that garage, and I don't know why. Drives me crazy. But yeah, other than that, um, here, let me, let me show Stuart off one sec. Stuart, come here. Come here. Oh, come see Dad. Oh. Mm. This cat is just the biggest daddy's boy. And he's really big. I, I don't I don't think it, you can appreciate his size. Understand that he is like this is my torso. Also, I, I guess I don't need that on my face anymore. This cat is massive. He's he's not fat, but he is one of the biggest cats I've ever seen. But look at him. Aww. Here, you can hear his purrs. He's not he's not a chunker, he's just a big boy. He's a daddy's boy though. He is a very, very sweet cat. I've had him now for uh, 10 years. Well, no, I take that back. Nine years. Um, I got him in 2011. So I've had him for nine years. He is... He just celebrated his ninth birthday. He's getting up there. Let him in the garage. He deserves it. I don't want to let him in the garage. There's a car in there. I don't want him, like, trying to climb up into the engine block and get stuck. What kind of cake? Uh, it was a Fancy Feast cake with a candle in it. And if you think I'm making that up, you clearly haven't gathered how little a social life I have. I'll just I'll just leave that there. Colby bears around here too, but he he tends to when I'm talking he do, he tends to not want to be around. I don't really know why he hasn't been around for the lectures the last few days, and Morgan's always just sleeping at this time of day. Fancy feast smells terrible. I hate the smell, but my cats love it, so they will dine upon feast most fancy. All right. Um, well, with that, I guess I'm not really seeing any questions, so I can end the lecture here. Um, take care, of course, everyone, and uh, I will see everyone Friday.